Still watching for S&P 5K. We're hovering just shy of that record high. Would be the first ever trade above that level on the back of a near 20% rally since the start of November. It's been remarkable. Joining us now to break down the technical setup for stocks from here is J.P. Morgan's Jason Hunter. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you. Thanks for having me back. What are the charts telling you about this move? So, I mean, what we saw into December was a broadening rally where small cap actually outperformed, which was rare for 2023. Um, since late December, and our first set of, of sell signals had triggered across, you know, the, the array of indices, Russell, NASDAQ, S&P 500, um, small caps have, have given up um, all of their outperformance from the fourth quarter, and we're back to what we had for, for most of 2023, particularly in the summertime, which is a thin and thinning uh, rally here as, as the uh, S&P moves higher. So it's something that's been able to, you know, as we, we just said a note, defy gravity here, uh, despite, you know, the, the, the lack of market breath and the repeated attempts for it to try and roll over. Um, but it certainly isn't a broad breath and, and broadening rally at this point. In our view, it's something that makes it look like the trend is starting to get long in the tooth and setting up for at least than your term pullback. But, it, you know, as long as we stay above, you know, let's say we stay around this level, do you still think the path is, is higher to, what, 51, 5,200? Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, I mean, at this point, and since the market first broke out in the fourth quarter, let's say when the S&P moved above 4,250 and then 4,400, um, when it really derailed that bearish momentum that had built through the summer and into the fall, um, if you just stopped yourself into a trend-following uh, type methodology, yeah, the market's still trending higher. And right now, 4,800 for us, that's where the S&P would have to break to start to turn even the short-term uh, momentum signals back to negative uh, and, and really run the risk of a, of a broader setback. So, sure, for anyone that's in that, that trend-following type methodology, the trend's up until it isn't. The leadership is thin, but it hasn't broken. If anything, on some of the earnings reports, it's even accelerated to the upside. Our view is that we don't quite reach that 5,100, 5,200 area, that we are going to stall out below that, but we have to respect the momentum in that handful of names. Uh, up know. until it isn't. I mean, those are the yeah. key words. These sell signals, as you cite, can be short-lived and, and obviously disappear. And you, you also point out in your note that it's difficult to sell these mega caps as they continue to go up. That's right. And we feel like whenever you see that that you know thinness in the rally where it's focused on growth, these aren't leading cyclical type names that are leading the charge here. It feels like a late cycle environment. The curve's been inverted for a long time. Um, but if you go back to the late 1990s, you know, that shows you how powerful those late cycle pushes could be. And like I said, it's hard to really step in front of that when you have this type of upside momentum. But the second that turn happens, it could be quick. So at this point, you know, we weren't on the long side of, of growth and NASDAQ in the fourth quarter. And, you know, obviously we were wrong there. But at this point, that's that's not something at all that we would chase. And we'd focus more on the Russell. Look, if if the Russell breaks above 2000, 2100 and you see cyclical start to lead, we'll have to change our tune on the medium to longer term outlook. But for right now, it still looks like a late cycle environment and it's gone on longer than we thought it would. Mm -hmm. It's been a bit painful over the near term, but it's not something we would chase here by any means. I appreciate it very much. Jason, we'll see you yeah. soon. Thank you. That's Jason Hunter, JP Morgan, their technical, uh, head of technical strategy there.